So now in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, my sample and hold circuit using the J310 JFET transistor. And uh, the uh, sample and hold, we have the trim pot here which I'm using to give a voltage to the gate. But as you can see, we have a switch in between there. So I actually have to press the switch. If I just turn the uh, trim pot, nothing happens. But if I press the switch, now you can see that the trim pot controls it. So we uh, left it there before I started the video and the LEDs are on, they stay on. If we dim it, we can dim it to any level. If I let go, they stay at that level. And if we go down all the way, of course they stay all the way off. So that's because we have this capacitor here that is storing the voltage to the gate. And since it's letting practically no current through the gate, that voltage holds there. And so it holds how well the transistor is conducting. So now I modified the uh, circuit. We still have the switch here, but right now the switch isn't affecting the circuit at all. It just goes to uh, this resistor and to ground, and then the other side to the gate. You can see that the trim pod is connected to the gate via this rectifier dial. So what this circuit does is I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Now you see the LEDs come on. I turn it off. They're slowly dimming but for the most part it's holding a lot of that voltage that we applied. Now we went back to zero. It's going to dim over time but uh, let's go all the way up and then all the way back down. And You can see we're not getting the changes as I change the trim pot. So now they're uh, pretty bright. It's going to take a little while for the capacitor to discharge but I have the switch here now to instantly discharge this. So this circuit could work for uh, something. I've been trying to think of uh, just demonstration circuits for all my components really to uh, come with to uh, both learn more myself and uh, to uh, show other people how these uh, components function. And so with the J310 this sample and hold circuit works pretty good in my opinion. I tried to make it with the uh, NPN bipolar junction transistor I think before and didn't have much luck. But here I actually have one so it's holding the uh, input that we gave it, it is slowly losing over time though probably maybe due to leakage of the capacitor and uh, other leakages but in any case we can uh, hold it on for a while but turn it off whenever we want. And so now to uh, buy us more time I swapped out this uh, basically 0.5 microfarad slightly uh, less than that just a tad bit for this 2.2 microfarad capacitor so we got a little more than uh, four times the capacitance and so we should hold whatever uh, voltage can you see that now there we go should hold whatever voltage that uh, we give it for hopefully about four times as long and I think it's mostly that these capacitors don't hold their voltage forever and uh, if we go up in voltage though it starts off at a lot higher voltage so it's going to take a lot more time to work its way down to the voltage where they start uh, dimming. So of course it's all kinds of modifications you can make to the circuit to match whatever you're going to need. But uh, the main point for this one is we have, I forget the uh, technical name for it, but uh, we're going to sample probably the upper voltage, whatever the upper voltage is, and uh, if it goes up again you can see like for a while until the capacitor discharges you can see what the maximum voltage was at a certain point with a circuit like this and then once you get that measurement and you want to start over then now we can wait until the voltage goes up again and then you'll be able to sample what that voltage was it's going to hold it a while and again as soon as you have that information you just reset it so now for uh, the last thing I'm going to discuss, I did show this circuit a couple videos ago. The uh, the basic, I turned the power off. The uh, basic transistor circuit for the JFET. The transistor is facing the other way now, though. So we have more positive down lower and uh, negative in the middle, and then our control 
at the uh, top. So we have the gate up here, the source in the middle, and the drain down at the bottom. So anyways, that's uh, the basic circuit I covered a couple of videos ago, but I added the uh, capacitor and this switch to this video and, and the diode. So uh, if the basic transistor circuit is confusing, go to that video. But in any case, so I have the voltage up now and uh, turned it back down. The LEDs are on. So we swapped out the 2.2 uh, microfarad capacitor for a 470 microfarad capacitor, as you can see there. And of course, they're polarized, but uh, this has a lot more capacitance, so the LEDs are staying on. I have this turned down for them to turn off. So they're polarized. The uh, gray stripe needs to be more negative, so we just plugged it right into the negative rail, most negative part of the circuit. So in any case, I want to talk about this resistor here. This, this resistor is important. It does. Let's charge the uh, capacitor up fully right now and then go back down to uh, nothing. Capacitor is holding that charge though. And if I press the switch, watch the LEDs. You'll see they take a little bit of time, not bad, to uh, turn off. They don't turn off instantly. So that's fine if you want to hold it, the switch for a little while. That's because the capacitor is discharging through the resistor. So the way I have this set up now is this trim pot can safely go from the uh, positive rail to uh, 5 volts or all the way down to the negative rail, 0 volts. This resistor here limits any possible current other than the uh, switch. So since this can go directly to the positive rail as we have it now, so if I close the switch it's going to stay there because it's, it's up there. The LEDs are going to stay on. But uh, you can see here the path. Now, when I close the switch, we have the positive rail, and then the wiper is directly to there. So the output here is basically directly connected to the rail. Then it comes to the diode, which will block about 0.7 volts. But still, that gives us 4.3 volts that comes to the gate and to the switch. So if we close the switch, then that goes to the resistor which now is limiting the current. It's the only thing limiting the current other than the slight voltage drop of the diode. If we connected this directly to ground then we would have a short circuit through there when we close the switch. So we have to have the resistor there as it is now. If we absolutely had to discharge instantly for some reason this was too slow for whatever reason we could put the resistor up here and put the jumper down there. In fact, let's just do that quick. But in uh, any case, uh, the main takeaway is whenever you build a circuit, before you turn the uh, power on, we should turn it off while we're making modifications even. Before you turn the power on, make sure that you have, you look through all the current pads and make sure there's enough resistance or a reverse bias rectifier dial block in all of the voltage. But in uh, any case, now we can do the same thing. Turn that on. It's going to hold it. Let's go all the way up. And uh, now, when I press this, you're going to see that the LEDs go off a lot faster, practically instantly. 